So it's a uh, Wordstock, also known as Portland Book Festival, I think now is the new name. Um, and I am going and I was like, I might as well do this thing again. So um, I'm going to attempt to vlog the day and then do like a haul at the end. Um, however, I haven't done this in a few months. And so I feel a little embarrassed, probably. I feel embarrassed vlogging in my house right now with no one around me. So doing it in public might be a little challenging, but I'm going to try. See you guys in a little bit. It's a video. It's a video. Wordstock video. It's digital. Digital. We got here before the event started and Jake is talking business with someone about magazine stuff. So I feel awkward. So I'm just going to stand over here by myself. They're setting stuff up. Such a beautiful day. Look at that. Oh, baby. This line that goes around the corner is for a middle grade graphics car. Isn't that exciting? Um, hi, thank you all for being here this morning. Um, this space is really beautiful from this perspective. It's just so much red happening. Um, I'll, I'll read a poem uh, called Antipode Essay. About really dark material. Um, <laughs> so I tend to write long, so I'll read you know, shorter poems, but it is also a little bit dark. Um, this whole collection, I'm not selling as well. The, um, <laughs> the collection is super lighthearted. Um, anyway, this, uh, this poem is for my grandmother um, who died after uh, she. Um, she died after she turned 100. She had the privilege of being able to choose euthanasia. Uh, thank you to my fellow panelists for allowing me into this space and thank you all for being here this morning. Um, I'm so glad to be back in Portland, to be back near the water <clears throat> because uh, my second clan is is Tkabahan, which means water's edge. And my third clan is Tkachini, which means red running into water. And my fourth clan is uh, which means salt water. So I'm always glad to be near water. Um, so, you know, because I come from Arizona where water is so scarce. <laughs> um, so it's very weird to get used to the humidity out here. <clears throat> um, I'll just read one poem. Uh, it's called Let There Be Coal. and I went and saw an author event that I filmed a little bit of clips from and then we, did, we saw some pop-up readings including a musical performance which is exciting and now I'm going we just ate and I'm gonna go into the book fair area and be probably naughty <laughs> Welcome to our panel! Live through this! Heartbreak, hope, and humor, which my wife has privately been referring to as live, laugh, love. <laughs> oh, <that's hilarious. laughs> uh, agree. Uh, 
Um, if I have to choose from live, laugh, or love, um, <laughs> I will also choose laugh. Um, as, as many of you might know, set in or around Texas about sort of scrappy, resilient um, people who are dealing with really bad things in a, in a funny way. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of like queer, queer themes and psychedelics. There's some mushrooms in there. We love to hear it. Love to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so the elevator pitch for Mostly Dead Things um, is lesbian taxidermist takes over the family taxidermy business in Central Florida after father commits suicide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. There it is. I was just really like, oh, that classic story. I have not really vlogged much because uh, I don't know. I'm boring and getting used to this again. And my phone is about to die. So say bye, Jake. Bye, Jake. Great. Um, one of the things that my work probably does is begin to further their work. So it, it, it felt, um, it does feel very strange for people to respond with surprise. I do think I should say this, that I was probably much more moved by the fact of what we call the Me Too movement um, emotionally. Um, and I do think that much of, many of the poems from my book that have to do with rape and, and sexual violence and, um, and sexual coercion happened because I did not see other men, men who I, knew, I know, I mean, everyone actually in this room, we know boys who are now men who had their first experiences sexually with grown women when they were 10 and 11 and 12 years old, and um, they're and grown men. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Um, and so that kind of a thing was something that I felt like it was it was probably, as far as I know, the only time that I've been that I've been driven to write something out of a feeling of pure responsibility. I felt like if I did not do that, it wouldn't be done by a man in the same in the same way in that moment and I felt um, that it was a shame not to see that happen um, and, and history um, especially poems that were about uh, the dictatorship in the Dominican Republic under Trujillo um, so I have poems um, that relate to that um, as well as poems about immigration and my own immigration story which is very different from let's say a you know traditional immigration story. Um, Sometimes the difficult thing for me is figuring out how much of myself is in the poem and how much is not and how much should be and how much I should take out. This past, no not this past summer, 2018 at the Kame Khan retreat, I had a one-on-one -on -one with Chris Abani about um, actually the title poem in this book that wasn't in this book originally. It's a long story. And he, it was like therapy, where I thought I was writing this poem about this thing, and then he drew this map, he was like, no, you're writing about this other, you're writing about your dead uncle, which, it made sense, but it didn't make sense to me. But I like the process of therapy with Chris Abani um, a lot. Hey guys, oh funny, this is the shirt I wore in my last video, awkward. Uh, hey, <laughs> um, how's it going? I am going to do some kind of currently reading catch up video probably tomorrow or something. Um, but I just wanted to film this since last weekend Jake and I went to Wordstock 
or I guess I keep forgetting they've rebranded uh, the Portland Book Festival now. Um, and yeah, it was super, super fun. Um, I have a couple of things, I guess, to say about it before I like get into the hall parts. The rest of this is basically hall. Um, I did want to say when I was looking at the schedule event, schedule of events. So, I mean, I have like a, a paper copy of it, but uh, you can see online ahead of time what events there are, uh, what's going to be happening. Um, and I, when I first, I feel really bad cause I was so not skeptical, but it, it was diverse. Okay. It was so, so diverse. Um, and when I was first looking at the schedule and I saw that diversity, I, <laughs> I don't really know how to explain it. I obviously love diversity because I'm a human being and, you know, I love people of all colors, religions, races, you know, gender expression, identity, whatever. I literally don't care as long as you're a nice human. That's what matters. However, I hate people that pack them pack, pat themselves on the backs for being diverse. Um, and I just felt, I don't know, I guess trying too hard is not the right word, but like my perception of what the literary arts in Portland is and like the, the people that make these decisions, my vision of them, and this is so judgmental and I'm so sorry, is a bunch of white liberal like 50 to 70 year olds. And so I have like a weird thing about that. And it's again, nothing like negative about people that are white or liberal or whatever. Um, it's just like, I don't know, my perception of it was like, I just felt like these people were like patting themselves on the backs for being like so diverse and so hip. Um, which is totally terrible because that's not the vibe that I got at all when I was there. It was just like a perception that I had at the beginning. And I just like, you know, wish I wasn't like that. I'm, I guess I'm, I think I'm a cynical person maybe, or I don't know what, but I, um, I, I do feel guilt that those are feelings that I felt because obviously every single panel that I saw was amazing. And I'm really pumped that I saw these people. I don't think I saw one, I don't think I saw one white man. That could be wrong, but I think every single person that I saw was either an author of color or a woman. So that's great, I think. <laughs> no, again, no offense to the white men, but you, you know what I'm trying to say. Anyways, um, so I put some clips of some of the, of the I went to three panels. Um, oh, let me see if I have the, the titles of the panels. Um, the first one... And hopefully I will also, um, my goal is to go back and edit this video, not this part, this part you're just getting what you're getting, but um, I'd like to put the name of the author and like the book that they're promoting um, and, you know, like a subtitle. Um, so the first event was um, with the three um, poets uh, and it was Look Closer, Poetry and Myth Remaking. And then um, the second one that I showed was uh, Live Through the Heartbreak, Hope and Humor. And then the last one um, was another just poetry one, and it was Dangerous Love, Desire, and Obsession. And I got so excited because um, the female in that panel uh, was Dominican, so that was really, really exciting. I had no idea. I'd never heard of her before. I went to that one because Jericho Brown um, was going to be one of the authors, and I feel like I know of him because of BookTube or something, but I felt like he was an important person and that I needed to see him, and I'm so glad that I went because he is brilliant and I obviously have this book now too um so that is really exciting there was also some pop-up events I'm sad I didn't um I didn't record any footage um for one of the pop-up events that I went to um but there was another uh woman that I'll show you her book I bought her book she like really really made me cry um I cried I cried a lot I think <laughs> that day um you know sometimes you just get emotional when you're in public I'm going to try to also um, drop down below in the description box some of the, I didn't record any of the book fair or any of like the tents or anything. So I'm going to try to um, link in the description box below. There were, you know, again, so many great small independent presses, which I am very like passionate about. It's not the right word, but I really, really appreciate and enjoy small presses. And I wish that we all would, um, try to focus our capitalism in their direction as opposed to on Amazon or book depository um, that I think that would be nice and I feel too when you have these like small presses they're a lot more um, 
what's the word? Like they, they take a lot of pride, obviously, in the works that they publish and like the, you know, the quality of the book and everything. So I think it's really nice. Um, Christmas is coming up. So yeah, you should check those links down below that I will be putting. Um, there's also a, a company that does like letterpress and they're, um, I think they're, I forget if they're Colombian or Chilean. I don't remember, but, um, they're, I had like a real emotional moment with her and like all of their, um, like posters and cards and stuff are absolutely fantastic. I don't know if you can buy them on the internet, but um, I will link them below so that you can check them out. It, they're so, so good. There's uh, the one that's, I think, the best. Maybe I'll try to internet search and put it right here, but if not, it says, um, oh my gosh, ni, ni putas ni santas solo mujeres, so not, not whores, not saints, just women, um, and I think that that is fantastic and wonderful, and I want to buy it and I wish I had but I was like oh, I don't want to like bend it and stuff while I'm walking around so anyways I feel like that's enough of me rambling and hopefully not making a total you know what out of myself um, I'm gonna start with um, I have two piles of books uh, the first pile is from just the book fair so none of these I have like a I don't have any like specific thing to say about them um, so uh, the first one that I got is Margaret the First um, by Danielle Dutton. I feel like everyone and their mother knows about this book. Um, this is published by Catapult. Um, and then this one, uh, I <laughs> I was gonna get a different one, but this author was actually at the booth and his coworker like really sold it up. So I was like, okay, fine, I'll, I'll get it. And then I was able to get it signed too. So that uh, is really nice. Uh, but anyways, this is Goodbye to the Nervous Apprehension by Michael Held, I'm going to assume. And this is published by Perfect Day Publishing. And again, I'm going to try to remember to link all of these publishing houses and small presses down below. Um, then I have October by China Mievel. I've never read anything by China Mievel, but I know that this is a really um, big sci-fi author. And then the, like, bl not blurb, but, you know, the little sub description is the story of the Russian Revolution. So I'm very curious how a sci-fi author is going to be talking about that. Um, and this is published by Verso Books. Then I think this this publishing house might be like my favorite that's there besides Tin House. Um, but this is uh, Chin Music Press. Their books are all so, so beautiful. Um, it's really impressive. Um, so this, you know, I you can't, you can't really like describe over the screen how lovely it is, but this book is absolutely gorgeous. Um, so it's basically after um, Hurricane Katrina and um, like New Orleans, the rebuilding. I thought that most of their books had to do with um, Asian like culture, um, but they, I don't know. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, I don't know. I haven't read it, but oh gosh, look at that. How beautiful. So yeah, this I'm really, really excited about that. Um, and then Black Sheep Boy by Martin Pousson, I think. Um, oh, I remember this. I Typically when I go to these booths and I talk to the people, um, I kind of like ask for their opinion. So, you know, the person at the booth kind of sold me on this one. And this is um, uh, an imprint of Rare Bird Books. The imprint is Barnacle Book um, by Rare <laughs> rare bird books um and this is a story it's set in the south and uh, the main author is queer and I feel like it has to do with that kind of <laughs> that's all I really know she really sold me on it but I obviously are kind of forget but I'm excited to read it and the next one actually is a <laughs> not a mistake um I went to the tin house booth and there was someone else and they were like debating between the two books and then I was like oh they both also uh, yeah I want them both too so you know, um, I got this one, um, cost, I can't pronounce that, uh, Costa Lerge, Costa Legre. I see, I don't know, like, what, <laughs> where this is from, because that determines how you pronounce things. Anyways, um, by Courtney Maum, and I feel like the, the, the lady at the booth described this, or I think it was a lady, um, as, like, very, like, vibrant and stuff and you know look at that and then this one is the changeling by joy williams um i read her 99 stories of god i think and it, uh, which was a flash fiction 
collection and that I thought was absolutely fantastic so I'm excited to read something full length by this author and again um, gorgeous covers tin houses they're so amazing um, and then I got uh, an issue of the Portland Review um, from their table. I forgot. I think Ludia, uh, Ludia, <laughs> Lydia Yuknovich is in this, and she is. I just looked at the back. So Lydia is in this, and then that cover is phenomenal. So that was really all I needed. So I'm already at 11 minutes, which is ridiculous. Sorry, guys. You can pause and do whatever or, like, leave if you want. <laughs> um, okay, so, oh, gosh, I should have organized these in order of how I saw them. Um, okay, so the first, um, the first panel with the, um, the one guy and then the two ladies. Um, I only picked up the book from the second author, um, and that is Nightingale by Paisley Rectal. Rectal. Um, she was the one that like spoke to me the most, and at that time I was still convinced that I wasn't going to be buying too many books, which obviously isn't what happened. But um, this one spoke to me the most. I'm also like really picky about poetry. Um, the gentleman, the um, that was on the left hand side of the stage, I guess. Um, well, I, there was only one gentleman during that. <laughs> Have I mentioned it's been a while since I've done this? Um, he was talking a lot about how he likes space on the page and how he likes the way the words are on the page. And so my impression of him was that there was going to be a, like a lot having to do with, um, the, the word placement on the page, which I like, I, that's not for me with regards to poetry or just in general. I don't like that. I like, you know, if I'm going to be reading poetry, I prefer like just prose poetry, just really basic. I'm really basic. <laughs> Not to say that this is basic probably, but um, the topics I feel like spoke to me the most. Jake, I'm recording a video. Can you go away until I'm finished? Yeah. I'm almost done. Uh, you're going so slowly. Um, so then the next group of people that I saw were the three ladies. Um, and so I already owned, I already own mostly dead things cause I got it in my pals and indis indispensable box, um, that I bought the, um, books from the other two authors. So that's a uh, black light by Kimberly King Parsons and magical Negro by Morgan Parker. This, um, she's the author that wrote the Jake, do you remember? Is it more beautiful? There's more beautiful things than Beyonce or something like that. You probably don't remember. It's fine. Just, just go away. Quick, quick, quick. Ah! ah! Um, so anyways, this this is the one that I'm actually, I think, the most excited to read. Um, although I fear that I will turn into a blubbering, disgusting, crying mess. But I really can't wait to read this. I might read this later today, actually. Um, and then these are stories. And um, Carmen Maria Machado um, wrote a little blurb on the front. So I was like, mm, I guess I have to get it um she she seemed really interesting and yeah I I like dark humor things so I went for it um and then the last one um that was the Jericho Brown one um I got all of their poetry collections which I just couldn't help myself um so this is Jericho Brown's um new collection that is out it is the tradition and then um Dianelli Antigua, uh, the Dominican author. This is hers, Ugly Music. And I feel like you can get kind of a vibe of what they're about based on um, how they're talking. I had like clips of the first authors reading a, a poem each, but I don't like being read to personally. I get like antsy, so I just like I cut that out. Sorry, if you're interested, let me know. I'm probably going to delete it off my phone. Um, and then this is um, Malcolm's. It's uh, Malcolm Tariq. Tariq? Um, and it's Heed the Hollow. Um, so I'm super, super excited. And he was so sweet. He like put, you know, he wrote a pretty like long kind of like thing in which I appreciate and like the date too, um, which I really, really appreciate as a book acquirer. I asked, I don't know if she put it on the post-it or yeah. Um, anyways, and so then um, the pop-up event that I didn't record any bit of, so I've hopefully put the names of the authors of the pop-ups back where they were. Um, but this is the other one that I like had to buy her book, A uh, Funeral for Flaca by Emily Prado. Um, and it's a mixtape memoir and essays. So it's basically an essay collection, uh, like coming of age, like her growing up 
and the the one that she read just like had me in tears and I'm really really excited to read this because anytime I mean you know I'm born and raised in the U.S. my mom is Dominican and so anytime there's like any kind of book or like feeling of that like um people like Hispanic people kind of growing in the U.S. and like what it, I don't really want to get into it but it basically um I enjoy it a lot it touches me in my soul, um, and makes me feel heard, which is why it's important for all kinds of people to be published. Okay. Um, so then Jake, Jake went to another event that I didn't go to. Um, I was trying to get into a different talk, but I didn't get it in, get in there, but Jake went to this one. And so he went and bought the books from the one that he went to. Um, this is, uh, Your House Will Pay by Steph Cha. And we actually saw her, the reason that Jake went to this event was because we saw her pop up. She was one of the ones that I, um, showed. And the, the premise of this book sounds amazing. Jake has already read this book, um, because he was like so into it. Um, but the premise of the story, I think it's based on a real event that happened. Um, but it's a like a Korean American or a Korean family that owns some kind of like liquor store or works in a liquor store, and a young um, black boy and girl brother and sister go into the shop, and you know an altercation happens and the Korean woman um, kills the young black girl. So it's it's about that, which again I think has to do with a real thing that happened in LA in like the 80s or 90s. I'm not really sure. Um, so it's you know obviously going to be really, really intense. And Jake read it already. He blew through it and said it was really, um, really good. So I'm excited to read it. And then um, he also got My Time Among the Whites, Notes from an Unfinished Education by Janine Capo Crusset. Um, I have nothing to say about this because I don't know who this person is or anything about it, but I'm excited to read it. And then the last one that Jake got that I also have nothing to say about is a good top Good Talk by Mira Jacob, um, a memoir and conversation. So this one, I guess I can say, is um, a graphic memoir. So that is all I have to say about that. This is super long, so I apologize. Hopefully, um, I think I just had a lot to say because it's been a while. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, let me know if you have read any of these, if you're interested in any of these, if you have any thoughts or feelings. Um, sorry about my little rant at the beginning of this, but I really do hate it when people congratulate themselves for doing something that is normal and shouldn't be congratulated because it should just be regular. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.